Welcome aboard the 787. In a few moments, we're going to take you flying with us so you can see some of its advanced features. Boeing's Captain Mike Bryan, a skilled 787 test pilot, is riding along in the right seat as our instructor. He'll show us why Dreamliner pilots have a lower workload and better situational awareness than in previous Boeing jetliners. 787, for instance, has four large LCD screens in the instrument panel and a fifth in the center console that provide 40% more display area than the six screens in the 777. This aircraft also has standard left and right side head-up displays plus left and right side electronic flight bags, or EFBs for short, that are fully integrated with the cockpit avionics. The EFB, for example, computes optimum flap settings and runway v-speeds. Then it sends the data directly to the flight management computer. Well, it's uh, a lot easier to explain how the 787's new functions work in the air, so let's go fly. Clear on the approach, final lineup checks. Power is up, auto throttles engaged. With 140,000 pounds of thrust and a takeoff weight of only 350,000 pounds, this aircraft is accelerating like a Learjet. 80 knots. V1. Rotate. V2, and we're airborne in just over 4,000 feet. We'll use the head-up display and hand-fly the aircraft for almost all of the flight because we want the most time to evaluate how it handles. 787 has fly-by-wire flight controls based on the system Boeing developed for the 777. The high-level control law is called C-STAR-U. C-STAR means that fore and aft yoke movement commands pitch rate on the ground and G-rate or vertical acceleration in the air. U means the aircraft is speed stable, so you, the pilot, have to trim nose up or nose down pitch in the air with speed change. P-beta or automatic roll and yaw compensation for an engine out condition is a new feature that Boeing is introducing on this aircraft. 777 only has thrust asymmetry compensation that minimizes yaw with loss of an engine. So the airplane still rolls in the direction of the dead engine. Yeah, don't do anything. Feed off the pedals. It's the delta thrust there for pitch. And that's the P-beta. Yeah, so this is the same thing. Rudder, rudder automatically comes in, flat bronze ailerons. You see the change in the switch there, just to keep it centered. Aboard 787, all you have to do is maintain pitch attitude. Virtually all of the roll and yawing moments are gone. You're not going to lose control, even with your feet on the floor, if you lose an engine on takeoff. But Boeing left in enough side slip so that you can tell which engine failed by the seat of your pants and then make appropriate rudder pedal inputs. Similar to the 777, Dreamliner has computer augmented spiral stability that helps pilots avoid upsets. The aircraft will hold bank angles up to 30 degrees. But its P-beta system also prevents yaw and roll coupling with asymmetric thrust, as Mike is demonstrating. As with 777, this Boeing allows the flight crew to disable the primary flight control computers if they malfunction and fly the aircraft using direct law mode. Yoke and rudder inputs then directly command flight control surface movement. The aircraft is completely controllable, but it doesn't fly as smoothly and it doesn't provide any of the flight envelope protections of the normal law mode. Maneuver Load Alleviation, or MLA, is another new feature on 787. Mike will roll the aircraft into a 60-degree bank turn and pull back on the yoke. 
The outboard spoilers on each wing begin to extend to reduce wing bending stress. The more G's you pull, the higher the spoilers pop up to prevent overstressing the wing. The alternate air data system is another new safety feature. If the aircraft's normal PITO static system ices up, the aircraft can derive airspeed and altitude from gross weight, slat and flap configuration, angle of attack, and GPS altitude. How well does that work, Mike? We're within 40 feet here and just eight or nine knots. Then it was time for pattern work at Moses Lake. We intentionally started down high on base leg to the ILS runway 32. Mike demonstrated how putting the gear down and setting the flaps to 25 or 30 degrees enables the 787's new auto drag function. The aircraft is actually so clean that even with gear and flaps extended, Descending to intercept glide slope from above can be challenging. Auto drag helps solve that problem by automatically deflecting the ailerons downward and raising the two outermost spoilers to increase drag. Our first approach was to a touch and go. Mike bugged our approach speed at 142 knots, five knots above VREF. The auto throttles maintain the speed within a knot. Boy, is this aircraft enjoyable to hand fly. It's easy to maintain azimuth and glide path on approach using the HUD. And it's not hard to land smoothly within the touchdown zone on the runway. Mike then pulled the right engine to idle. The second approach was a simulated one engine and operative approach to minimum. We used flaps 25 degrees and let the P-beta yaw roll compensation system take care of the thrust asymmetry. At minimums, we executed the missed approach. With full thrust on the left engine and my feet on the floor, we went around with very little side slip or rolling moment. I wish all big twin turbofan aircraft were this easy to fly with an engine out. We continued the simulated one engine in operative condition for our final landing at Moses Lake. The auto throttle kept our speed on target. The HUD allowed us to fly the approach with great precision. 30 feet and we flared for landing. Touchdown was smooth, but, oh, make a note. You need to hold back pressure on the yoke and fly that nose wheel right down to touchdown or it will thump down. On rollout, we thought about the flight. Conclusions, 787 is the easiest handling Boeing jetliner we've ever flown. The moving control yokes, along with the back-driven throttles and speed brake handle, help keep the crew in the loop. The displays are top-notch with intuitive graphics and excellent use of color cueing. New features and functions added to the fly-by-wire system boost safety margins during high workload conditions. In short, 787 may have been three years late to market, but it was well worth the wait. Just a couple big, once you come, just a big sweeping right turn. It's not sure. Right to that. <laughs> Mike, would you take over and park it, please? Oh, right, you got it. All right, there we go. Well, thanks for flying with us today. We hope you enjoyed it. Look for a full technical description at Aviation Week.